I'm James from Bike Lock Wiki, and this is part two of destruction testing between the CT Lock Viking Silver and the Abus 8900. During part two, we'll continue destruction testing either of these chains, although we'll be using some more extreme tools to target and attack either lock. First, we'll start with angle grinder testing using a 125 mm 18 volt angle grinder. This is more similar to what thieves will be using on the street rather than a mains powered grinder that many other security review channels use. For grinder testing with chains I make 5 complete cuts through 5 different chain links, recording the time taken for each. Then I average these out to provide a final result. Whilst it would be more realistic to simulate the theft attempt with a chain locked to a bike rack, having the links held in a vise provides data that is more comparable. It's important to remember that angle grinders are typically used to steal higher value bikes or e-bikes, which isn't what either of these trains are designed for. Angle grinders are also loud and will naturally attract a lot of attention to theft attempts, but this hasn't stopped thieves from targeting high value bikes in broad daylight. As you've just seen, the results of the five cuts through the Vikings chain gave us an average cutting time of 8.18 seconds. Next up, the 8900. Remember here that each of the 8900's links are 2mm thicker than the Vikings, which helps explain why it takes slightly longer per cut. Ultimately, as you can see, both chains are relatively easy to cut when held in place with a vice under lab conditions. These times aren't an accurate reflection of how this would go down on the street, as it's much harder to cut a train that's not secured in place, even with a pair of forceps, it's still a challenge. Don't forget the possibility of members of the public interrupting, or even better, the police. At this point, I replaced the cutting disc on the grinder as it was becoming worn and had significantly reduced in size. The grinder's battery was fully charged to begin with, so I didn't swap it out, which may have impacted cutting times ever so slightly. Even with the chains held in place by the vise, there are many variables that affect cutting times, as you can see by the irregular timings gathered. This is why I chose to make 5 cuts and provide an average. Now I could have sped these clips up, but I wanted to show the cuts in real time to prove that these cutting times were genuine, and also to provide context on this testing so that it's not misinterpreted. As you've just seen, the Abus 8900 did take longer to cut per link, averaging 14.64 seconds per cut. I do note again that the 8900's links are 2mm thicker, and due to their increased width and size, the protective guard on my grinder was catching on the vise at times, marginally increasing the cutting difficulty. Otherwise, it's fairly safe to say that the 8900 provides greater resistance to angle grinder attacks. Tungsten carbide hacksaw testing up next, and after my HSS testing in part 1, I didn't know what to expect from either of these hardened steel chains. I used a brand new blade for this test, and started with the 8900. So as not to bore you to death, I made the cutting footage 10 times faster, as the cutting times were slow compared to the angle grinder testing. As I got to the end of the first cut in the 8900, the link tightened slightly on my hacksaw blade, preventing me from continuing. But as you can see, the remaining metal left to cut was paper thin. A total cutting time here of 2 minutes 54 seconds. Now the times collected are for a single cut through one side of the link. To remove a chain from a bike, two complete cuts would need to be made. However, as you can imagine, cutting a chain on the street with a hacksaw is going to be a serious challenge, as you'd really struggle to hold the chain still enough to make a clean cut. I'm not sure a thief would bother attempting to cut a well-made lock with a hacksaw, instead they'd probably opt for bolt cutters or power tools. Total cutting time for the Viking Silver is 1 minute 48 seconds, so considerably quicker to cut than the 8900. But again, the links are 2mm thicker, so we have to bear that in mind. The final test in part 2 of destruction testing is a cylinder security test using HSS drill bits to attempt to drill and damage the locking mechanism of either chain. To be honest, the drill bits I used were on the thin side, but both were brand new and I wanted to see how they'd affect the internal discs and sliders of either chain. As you can see, the Viking Silver's anti-drill plates snagged on the drill bit twice, causing it to snap off inside the mechanism. I gave up after about two minutes here as the drill bit was too short to continue. 
Viking 1, drill, nil. Next, the 8900, which finished off my drill bit surprisingly quickly. As you can see from the sparks created, the drill snagged on the external anti-drill and anti-tamper notch, bending the drill bit so that it could no longer spin straight, rendering it useless. Good performance here from both locks, neither was compromised, I was able to make slightly more progress with the Viking, but it still thwarted my drill attempts. Thanks for subscribing to the channel and watching my videos. I've invested a lot of time, effort and money into building BikeLock Wiki into the reliable resource that it is today. I'm always looking to improve the quality of the content I produce for my viewers and readers and always value your feedback. If you have any content suggestions or if you'd like to see locks tested in a different way, then please leave me a comment down below and I'll get back to you.